1991, a year of momentous happenings that saw the promise of an end to apartheid and the Cold War, also saw the death of a jazz legend. In the simmering Gulf conflict, Iraq was given a final withdrawal deadline of January the 15th to withdraw from Kuwait. Ignoring the warnings, Saddam Hussein held his ground and a day later, Operation Desert Storm began. The Allies' devastating and sustained aerial bombardment involved cruise missiles launched from US warships. According to Saddam Hussein, the mother of all battles had begun and he urged the Iraqi people to stand up to evil. After more than a month of intensive air attacks, the Allies launched a land offensive on the 24th of February. One day later, the Iraqis began retreating, and on the 27th of February, President George Bush declared victory. Kuwait was liberated, but Saddam Hussein remained in power in Baghdad. A few months before his death, musician Miles Davis, one of the most significant figures in post-war jazz, was awarded the Légion d'honneur, France's national order, in a special ceremony in Paris. Cultural Affairs Minister Jack Lang pinned the order's red ribbon on the 66-year-old trumpeter and bandleader. Widely considered one of the most influential musicians of the 20th century, Davis was at the forefront of almost every major development in jazz from World War II to the 1990s. Davis helped pioneer the post-war jazz movement known as bebop. Known for his lyrical soloing, he subsequently had an illustrious career playing with such influential musicians as Charles Mingus, Theolonius Monk and John Coltrane. Miles Davis died on September the 28th, 1991. The Soviet Union announced that it had agreed with its Warsaw Pact partners to dismantle the alliance's military structure by April the 1st. Three pact members, Czechoslovakia, Hungary and Poland, had been pressing Moscow for a summit to set a formal date for winding up the Soviet-led alliance. Moscow felt the move would reduce the threat of confrontation in Europe and was in line with the spirit of the 1990 Paris Agreement at which 34 countries officially ended the Cold War between capitalist West and communist East that had existed since World War II. The Warsaw Pact had been set up in 1955 and originally comprised Albania, Bulgaria, Czechoslovakia, East Germany, Hungary, Poland and Romania, as well as the Soviet Union, but Albania soon left. It had been virtually defunct as a military organisation since the collapse of communist rule in four of the group and the reunification of Germany. And it wasn't long before the United States began the process of making sweeping reductions in its nuclear forces worldwide and the Soviet Union welcomed the cuts. The 1991 Soviet coup d'etat attempt, also known as the August Putsch or August Coup, was a three-day period during which a group of members of the Soviet Union's government briefly deposed Soviet President Mikhail Gorbachev and attempted to take control of the country. The coup leaders were hardline members of the Communist Party who felt that Gorbachev's reform program had gone too far and that a new union treaty that he had negotiated dispersed too much of the central government's power to the republics. Although the coup collapsed in only three days and Gorbachev returned to power, the event undermined the legitimacy of the Communist Party and contributed towards the collapse of the Soviet Union. While their northern neighbours were making efforts at peace, the ethnic conflict in the Baltic states became a war that cost the lives of thousands. Yugoslav Prime Minister Ante Markovic called for Serbs and Croats to surrender their weapons or have the army take them away by force, following the latest round of ethnic violence between the two groups. Meanwhile, the Croatian vice president of Yugoslavia, Stipe Mesic, said Croatia would crush a rebellion by the minority Serbs if the Yugoslav army did not restore peace there within one month. Later in the year, Nelson Mandela, president of the African National Congress, while he was in New York to address the United Nations General Assembly, said that a breakthrough might be near in the struggle to dismantle apartheid. He thanked the representatives who greeted him at the UN Plaza Hotel for their aid in fighting apartheid. 1991, a year of disarmament, war and hope for black Africans was, beyond doubt, a year of momentous happenings.